you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. I'd like to talk to you tonight about attitude is everything. And folks, I cannot, you know, emphasize enough. In everything you do, okay, uh, you know, I played a lot of sports when I was young. And, uh, you know, I've coached in just in sports, in work, at home, uh, in all facets of life. Attitude is very, very important. Uh, Acts chapter 16, and we're going to uh, begin in verse 16. And let me set just a little background here. Uh, in chapter 16 earlier, uh, Lydia was baptized, uh, you know, and we know her name. She is a seller of purple. Uh, she was leading a prayer meeting down uh, by a river, and uh, uh, Paul came along. He preached the word. Uh, she got saved, and uh, it was obvious she had a big influence on her family and even in the town. And so God was moving in a mighty way. Uh, and then in verse 16, uh, Paul and them were again preaching and uh, people were being saved. And uh, let me pick up in verse 16 and, and let, me, let me just preface what I'm fixing to say. Anytime people are being saved, you can expect Satan to, to be on the prowl. Okay? Anytime people are getting saved, he's going to be somewhere out there uh, trying to discourage people uh, trying to stir up strife. Uh, he'll do anything uh, to stop the gospel, uh, not just being spread, but it really upsets him when people are saved. All right? Um, verse 16, now it happened, uh, as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed uh, with the spirit of divination met us. And again, folks, we're talking about a demonic spirit here. It's real... Uh, they're they're everywhere nowadays. I'm just telling you. I can sometimes walk in a room and sense a demonic spirit. Uh, you know, you know, you don't have to just you know look at people and try to determine something. You can feel it. Uh, the the oppression uh, in places. And who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling? Okay, we're talking about money. All right, money. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Now if it was anybody else, nothing would have been said. But everybody there knew who she was and what she was about. And Paul felt like it was a bad uh, you know, look uh, for her to be saying this. And, and uh, this she did for many days. So not just for a little while, many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, okay, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And folks, there is such th thing as righteous indignation. Uh, the Bible tells that, tells us that. Okay, when something is wrong, uh, we need to voice concern about that and how we do it and the attitude which we do it is very very important okay he basically rebuked this evil spirit and the spirit that demonic spirit uh, came out of her and he came out that very hour but when her master saw that their hopeful hope of profit was gone they seized paul and silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities so what was the really basic thing? What was, you know, uh, uh, you know, her boss and those people, what were they upset about? They're going to lose money. Okay, and folks, I'm just telling you, our whole society runs around money. Money does a lot of bad things. Okay, it, and, and again, you know, money itself is not the root of all evil. Okay, it is how we look at money, the attitude that we have about money. So uh, this was going on, and uh, she lost uh, her demonic power and could not do and could not turn a profit uh, for that. So the owners got really upset, drug them to the marketplace. Look at verse 20. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, 
and they are and they teach customs which are not lawful for us uh, being romans to receive or to observe and you can see what they were trying to do they were trying to get them in trouble with the romans uh, they figure you know being jews uh, they're not one of us as far as romans and they were using the court system to get Paul and, and them arrested. And it says, Then the multitude arose up against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And again, Paul was only doing uh, what he felt like was right. He removed an evil spirit from this lady and freed her from that, but because of who it was, and, and there was a majority of people there that were Romans, they all started attacking uh, Paul and Silas. And it says, and beating them with rods. Now think about that. There's a thing today called due process of law. And <laughs> you know what I'm finding now, sometimes when you read some reports, sometimes that is, that, that is not the way things go. All right, they should have uh, brought them in. They should have questioned them. They should have went through the process to determine. And then, even at that time, they had Roman courts, but none of that was followed. All right, and you know why? Because Satan was on the prowl. Satan was after Paul and Silas. Why? Because people were getting saved around this town and around this place. And it says, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. So they were beaten without a court, without due justice. They assumed things, and they were unjustly punished. Paul and Silas had done nothing wrong, folks. And it says, Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So they didn't just put them in the prison. The inner prison was the one as far as it is to the back of the prison. And in that back prison, uh, they always tied chains to them. Their, their, their feet and their hands were chained so that they would not get away and there was no way to escape. Now look at verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, <laughs> let's be honest here. Your average Baptist, <laughs> your average Christian, okay? I was kidding about Baptists. But your average Christian at this point would be kind of thinking, man, this, this is a bad deal. We really didn't do anything wrong. We got beaten, and we shouldn't have. All right, we sh this, we, it's been unfair. It's unjust what they have done. But notice their attitude. Folks, attitude is everything. Do you realize people pick up on your attitude? You ever have conversations where you say, well, you're mad. No, I'm not. You're mad. <laughs> and they just deny it. They just deny it. You know they're mad. Okay? But yet, I, I am telling you, it is so important that we as Christians keep a good attitude in all that we do. Okay, now, nobody wants to get beaten. But folks, you have to realize, the verse that comes up in my head is we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of darkness. Okay, it's not God punishing us. Okay, it's God teaching us. It's God testing us. It's God preparing us for another situation in life. So instead of being upset, instead of being mad, okay, the two things that we, they were doing, they were praying. All right? Would you feel like praying after you just got beaten? Would you be singing hymns or praises to God? I'm just asking, okay? Honestly, most of us wouldn't do that. But I'm telling you, it's like the last thing I said last Wednesday night. Uh, and, and I told you the wrong thing. I said, Sonny Holland, okay? Sonny Holland wasn't the one that said that to me. Uh, now I forgot who it was. Steve, did I tell you, did I tell you the difference? Okay, I'm trying to think. It was anyway, one, an evangelist uh, told me this, that you cannot offend a spirit-filled Christian, Okay? 
Why? Because they have the right attitude. Okay, so Paul and Silas was having church in a prison. Many ears were listening to them. Many people knew. Some of them even saw what happened to them. And they used that as a testimony for Jesus Christ. And folks, if they would have had a bad attitude, what kind of testimony would that have been? You have to understand, folks, you know, people see and they observe us and they watch us all the time. I have seen Christians get on waiters and waitresses in a restaurant because maybe their glass of tea wasn't filled up. And you know what else? My son was in, in, in the food business, and one of the things that he said people said on Sundays was that Christians are some of the worst tippers around. Folks, we shouldn't have that reputation. We should have a good attitude. We should uh, you know, uh, realize that the beating that we took, the beating that these guys took was for the Lord. Okay? And, and our attitude, and folks, good attitudes change people. Good attitudes. And it says, and the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Well, you know, the stars lined up just right and the bare mech pressure was a certain way and man, an earthquake just happened. Folks, we know better than that. God said, you know what? I'm going to reward you guys for, what you, for your attitude and how you reacted into this. I'm going to free you up, okay? I'm going to free you up, and I'm going to allow you to keep witnessing for Jesus Christ. Folks, I believe a lot of it was because of their attitude. They were praising God. They were praying. Men that were in prison were listening and probably wondering, who are these guys? What are they doing? And you don't pray in prison. You don't sing. You know, everybody there is griping about being there. And so I believe with all my heart uh, that God caused this earthquake and He opened the doors for a specific person. Listen, folks, if someone has been chosen, if someone has been predestined, God would do whatever it takes and God can do anything He wants to get that person to salvation. They're going to be saved. And God uses this situation. And another thing about attitudes, attitudes reflect our words and our actions. Okay? There there's, has to be. All right? It is, it is a reflection of our words sometimes and especially our actions. In verse 27, And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, supposing the prisoners had fled, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Well, folks, nobody wants to witness a suicide. Okay? But I'm telling you, the law, Roman law was if anyone, one prisoner escaped, that guard's life would be taken. He would pay for his life for allowing someone to escape. So he's about to kill himself. And he might have even been the one that was in on the beating. Think about that. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we all are, all are here. And there's two things that I want you to understand about this. Number one, if doors fly open to prisons, what would most prisoners do? <laughs> I mean, we're heading out. I mean, they'd be thinking God, all right, and they'd be running as fast as they could go, okay? But it didn't happen. But yet, the second thing was, think about this. Being prisoner, being locked up, Paul was in charge of this situation, not the Roman guard. Paul knew what was happening. And Paul looked at this man's life, and I'm telling you, here's the deal, folks. Everybody's a prospect. Everybody's a prospect. All right? I mean, God can 
allow things to happen on our life where people who are hurting or people who are desperate come to us. And God, we need to, and, and folks, we need uh, to allow God to let us to speak to these people and counsel these people and encourage these people and tell them about a God that we know that they can change their lives. Then verse 29, then he called for a light and he ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Why? He realized that he truly had a near death experience trembling the fear of god was in him he knew the earthquake had happened he knew there was something different about paul he knew that paul crying out and you know uh, hollering at him and telling him to stop saved his life okay physically saved his life And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You know what that tells me? That wasn't the first time he was confronted with the gospel. Okay? He said what a seeker would say. He had either been to that a service or he'd been around Paul or he'd been around some Christians to realize, man, this salvation stuff... It's the real deal. You tell me, please tell me, what can I do to be saved? Folks, there's a whole world out there that is asking questions. Is God real? Is church real? Does God love me? Does God care? All these questions that are in people's minds. And I mean, because Paul and Silas, I believe, had the right attitude God, that, that they were allowed to lead this uh, prison guard to the Lord Jesus Christ. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. See, what started out is one salvation. God just convicted his heart. The conviction of the Holy Spirit was all over him. And folks, I cannot tell you a true conversion, somebody's life that totally changes can influence many people. Once I was lost, but now I'm saved. Folks, that is a testimony many people can use in their life. So he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it not only influenced this soldier, it influenced his whole household. Then verse 32, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all that were in his house. Remember what had happened. He was beaten. He was thrown into prison. It seemed like Satan had won. But I got news for you, folks. Our God can set anyone free. He can set anyone free. We don't have to be bound with addictions. We don't have to be down with hate. We don't have to be bound, uh, you know, uh, with just hopelessness. Folks, our God can change people's lives. And not only him, but his whole household. That whole household. It doesn't give a number, okay? But several were saved that night because of the attitude of Paul and Silas. And he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Okay? What did he immediately do? He realized that, man, they were unfairly beaten. And, man, he had compassion. The soldier turned from soldier and that stone face and and that you're my prisoner and, you know, I'm in charge here to, to... you know, helping with their wounds and bandaging them. And immediately, he and him him and his whole family were baptized. I know this is a common story, but is this not one of the coolest stories in the New Testament? You talk about a 180. You talk about a turnaround. It went from a beating in a prison to a baptismal service in just a matter of, you know, maybe an hour. Okay, maybe two at the most. And you know the other thing I thought of when I was studying this and looking at this? 
Where was the Romans folks and where were all those at this time where there was time for all this to happen? I'm just telling you folks, God can set up anything and God can do anything. God can give you as much time as you need when the gospel comes out and people are saved. And immediately he and him and his family were baptized. Now when he had brought uh, them into his house, he set food before them. Not only bandaged him, but he fed them. I'm pretty sure if they would have been in prison, they would have not gotten anything to eat that night. But man, I'm telling you, this guy, this soldier, was a changed man. Okay, that oh hard, you know, you know, uh, and I have utmost respect for the military. But I'm just telling you, uh, it's black and white. Rules are rules. You break them, you're going to pay. And God just totally changed them, and uh, he he fed them food, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Oh, folks, I am telling you, every day of our lives, every day of our lives, people are watching us. And there are times, I'm, I'm just telling you, we let some little things really upset us. And sometimes we say things we probably shouldn't have said, or we've had an attitude, or we've had a little fit, or we've gotten upset just, just with the drop of a hat. And folks, we need to realize Attitude is everything, folks. We need to be aware of our surroundings, our environment. We need to understand that, uh, especially us as adults, okay, you know, we need to be the bigger persons. We need to give people more room. We need to be more understanding with people so that we may be able to testify to them and to share the gospel with them and see the Holy Spirit work. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I just thank you for this story. And I know uh, most of us could tell it. Uh, but Lord, just a reminder, sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes we wonder uh, just why something has happened. But God, you have a purpose and a reason for everything that you do. And God, I pray, Lord, I just pray uh, that we would be aware that uh, we are Christians and people are watching us. And God, I pray that we would have the right attitude, especially in the hard times, especially when we're treated unfair. God, I pray that we would just do the right thing. And God, I truly believe we will have uh, places for ministry. We will, will have places of influence. And God, I pray that we would be praying for people while we're in line, or we would be singing or humming hymns uh, when things aren't going good. Because God, you can fix anything. God, you can change anything. You can change attitudes, and you can change hate into love. So God, I pray that we would love people unconditionally. And God, I pray that we would share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around us. Lord, that's what we're here for. That's why we go to church. That's why we pray. That's why we learn to witness. And God, I just believe with all my heart, you would give us even more opportunities with a good attitude. So God, I pray, Lord, that we would just look deep into ourselves and we would do our best to have a Christian attitude at all times. God, thank you for this story. Thank you uh, for just being with us. Uh, God, thank you for just this reminder as we uh, read your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.